Good morning. It's Friday, and I am so blessed to be here with you. Jean Burden here. And, um, oh, you know, there are days when you need your own devotional, you need your own thing, and God is so faithful to send it. And so, um, I just hope some of you are going to be able to join me today. And uh, it's so sweet, though. I heard from somebody yesterday who said, oh, no, you're my nighttime devotional. I watched the video. I am so glad whenever you see it. I just hope it's my, my prayer is always that whatever I'm sharing is exactly what you need to hear on this day or maybe on a day that's upcoming. And you need to you need to already be um, prepared for that day. So I am just always thrilled to be here, thrilled to be talking about God's word. I want to tell you that I got a book in the mail yesterday. Good morning, Ruthie. And I've been looking at it online. I got it yesterday. Scott Schuler. Why can't I get this Jesus thing right? Understanding your God, your enemy, yourself. Now, Scott's parents are friends of ours. And um, this is a... This book has had got high praise from some people that I look to for spiritual advice and guidance and so I started reading it and I'm telling you it was exactly what I needed to hear at this particular moment in time and so I want to share some of this with you this morning um, and good morning ladies I'm checking to see who's here I'm so glad look at y'all good morning glad to have you with me maybe this is something you need to hear too you would think after all this time that we were immune to silly attacks from Satan, but they really aren't silly. There's nothing silly about them. They are vicious attacks. And you would think at this point we would be immune, but I'm not, okay? You know, he attacks and attacks and attacks, and he tends to attack often in the same way over and over again. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. But this week, this week, he hit me differently. Some, something happened Tuesday at work that just stung me to the core and, and it wasn't adults it wasn't adults but but it stung me and and it made me get upset and and then anyway anyway I, I can't talk about it but I can just tell you that it got to me and I kept asking myself why am I letting this bother me so much I mean why you know anyway yesterday something else happened that it, that made me on the heels of Tuesday doubt myself. Doubt doubt myself. I, I just all I'm gonna say. It made me doubt myself. Uh, am I smart enough? I'm not as smart as others around me, and they don't even know that they hurt me. The, the people who who did what they did don't even know. They don't have a clue. And then. This Tuesday situation rolled back around, and this morning I had the clear feeling like everybody's weighing in, and and I began to, and something else happened yesterday. I, I'm just telling you, here's here's the point. Everything, really, from about Tuesday forward up until this morning when I studied and went out and had my time with God praying, walking and praying. Satan was shooting very fiery darts to make me doubt that God has my back. That it doesn't matter what others think. That God has my back. Now, I don't mean God has my back when I'm wrong. He still loves me when I'm wrong, but he wants to correct me. But that God is in this every situation that I've just mentioned, every situation, he's in it. And he loves me. And sometimes Satan just shoots and shoots and shoots and shoots. So this is where I want to go to this book. I want to read you a brief story that just gave me a whole new perspective about what Satan's doing to you and me. Okay? Even at this place in our spiritual journey. Listen to this. This comes from Scott Schuler. Why can't I get this Jesus thing right? The clear blue waters and mild weather of Costa Rica 
created the perfect setting for sitting atop a fishing rig. My family and I began the day with one goal in mind, to catch a saltwater marlin that would possibly elicit the fight of our life. The anticipation of reeling in this large fish, using all our strength to draw him to the boat, followed by the liberating euphoria of setting him free, generated intense excitement as we prepared for that day. Now, I'm going to skip a little bit. They're, they're, they're trawling along. They put set their hook. You know, they're, they're waiting on it to happen. And here it comes. Boom. Our line was hit. Our heads jerked up. The tight line signaled we had hooked a marlin. We felt its strength on the other end, pulling desperately away from us. The reel spun almost uncontrollably as the marlin yanked the line. When the magnificent five-foot creature surfaced, we gasped. We battled the 70-pound fish with a fishing rod that seemed ridiculously inadequate. We reeled in our catch, making sure the line did not grow too tight or too loose. About 25 minutes later, we brought the large fish alongside the boat. We relinquished the thrill of the catch and marveled how one small hook landed that enormous fish. Its fate rested in our hands simply because it took the bait. Mm. Just as the marlin took the bait in my family's fishing experience, Satan, your enemy, baits multiple hooks to tempt you. When I read that, I had one of the biggest aha moments that I've had lately. You see, I recognize when Satan tries to bait my hook about certain things because he uses those things over and over and over and over, and I've stopped responding to him, okay? But when he comes at me to make me question, what do people think about me? Are they talking about me? You see, I lived my life for a long time being a people pleaser, and I've not been doing that in a long time. And the, the jabs that he sent my way this week troubled me, and they got me way down, way down to the point that I got a little frantic, and I have no business being frantic. But you see, what did I do? He kept sending that bait and sending that bait and sending it because he knew. He knew my mind was, was reeling in it. And in my mind had no business reeling in it. But because back as far as Tuesday, when my mind began to reel, and it continued on Wednesday, and it, 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 it's reeled right on. So he even used family to make me say, I'm not good enough not good enough. I'll never be good enough. What do people think of me? And I know better. But you see, he kept sticking that bait out there and sticking that bait out there. And finally, he got me. He got me. Satan is not omniscient God. He does know how to attack us. He does. He is, in, bio, in, the, in Matthew, he's called the prince of demons. He is the prince of darkness, the prince of demons. And he knows how to attack us with those fiery darts, that bait that will, if he can keep after us and keep after us, it'll wear us down and eventually we'll give in to it. And listen to this. And this was my giant aha moment this morning. Satan's flaming darts, or thoughts of sinful behavior, are an all-out mental assault. His strategy begins with firing a single arrow into your mind. Thoughts of, and there's all kinds of things, lying, stealing, overeating, inflicting physical harm, uh, illicit sexual behavior, drunkenness, greed, gossip. He, he shoots, 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 shoots. He wants to see what you do, but listen to this. If you continue gravitating toward the behavior, more flaming darts will follow. The pattern starts slowly, but the frequency increases based on your reaction to the thoughts and temptations he sets before you. And if you don't recognize Satan's attack, you will eventually succumb to the temptation. That 
struck me like nothing I've read in a while. I mean, it's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. He, he shoots it, and when it works, he shoots another one, and it works, and he shoots another, he, the frequency increases, because he says, I got her now, this other thing's not working anymore, but I'm gonna try this, and I'm gonna come after her, and I'm telling you, by last night, I was beat down. Do you hear me? Beat down. Beat down. But early this morning, I got a text from a friend and here's what it said. Where is it? I'm always here for you. And this is a Christian sister. I'm always here for you. Well, she is. And we need support with skin on. But we also need to remember God is always here for us. And in these attacks, it's false evidence appearing real. It's fear of not being enough, of doing this thing or whatever. Whatever he attacks you with, this week he has come after me with a vengeance over you're not enough. You're dropping the ball. You're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not, you're not as smart as everybody in your family. And I'm telling you, it got me. And I'm telling you this to say, you know, you'd think at, our, at my age and my experience with God, this would not get me. But you see, Satan is vicious. He's a liar. He's a thief. He's a destroyer. And what he wanted to do to me this week is make me doubt my colleagues, doubt my family, doubt my friends, because they're making me doubt me. But truly, it's not them they were just, Satan was using them to make me doubt me. And it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Satan and his cronies, his, his league of demons, shoots thoughts into our minds. Here's the deal, too. God alone can read our thoughts. You see, God knew what was in my heart and my mind. God knows what's in me. Satan can only... He can't read my thoughts, but he can shoot darts hoping he will bring me down. And you see, once I get on his hook, he's not going to let go. And that's exactly what happened to me this week. You don't think God sends you a rescuer in when you need it most? This book showed up in the mail yesterday for Dan and me. I didn't order it. I didn't order it. It was exactly what I needed to have. Satan is trying to keep me baited with his hook. And when it worked on Tuesday morning, and it worked on Tuesday afternoon, and it worked on Wednesday, he kept at it. And by Thursday, he really did a number on me because the frequency increased because it was working. So how do we come back against this and how do we win? Well, I want, to, I want to tell you a couple of things. that <clears throat> One of these, I love this image, and again, I'm going to use this as well. How do we stop these attacks, especially when he's attacking our minds? Well, how do we seize that arrow before it embeds in our minds and hearts? How do we snatch it before it even gets there? Well, think back to the shield of faith. I, let me turn the page. I think he mentions this over here. Well, we need to pick up the shield of faith with which we can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. That's from Ephesians 6, 16. And, and you know, so we need to put up the shield of faith. But, but what does that mean? Who do we have faith in? Shield of faith that God is our defender. The shield of faith that, that I am fearfully and wonderfully made, and I know that for will. The shield of faith, I want to pull back to something we talked about um, a couple of days ago. The faith that, hang on, I'm going to get there. I didn't plan to do this, but this has really struck me. Faith that God, um, God uh, called us to a good fight. Remember we talked about the good fight, uh, I think it was Wednesday. We talked about this Wednesday. 
faith that God's will for me is good. His purpose for me is good. And if he eliminates something from my life, if he eliminates people from my life, it's because his good and pleasing and perfect will is the only one that matters. But you see, Satan would have me doubt that. Satan would have me doubt the work of God in me. Satan would have me doubt, you doubt the hope of God in you. Satan would have us doubt everything. But what I know is that God works everything together for good for our lives. And so, so what we have to do is put up that shield of faith that says, I know better than this. I know better than this. And all that noise out there that was coming at me in darts and trying to make me think differently, it's just that. It's a, an attack from Satan. And this has been a particularly vicious attack this week. I'm not going to lie. Partly because I've been tired. I've had too much on my plate. And God's helping take care of that too. He's been after my mind and my heart. Because he's really after God. And he will use you and he will use me to hurt God. Um, Scott Schuler gives a wonderful image, and it reminds me of a little book. And I think I've mentioned this to you before. There's a little book called Elbert's Bad Word, and Elbert says bad words. And, and they want to help Elbert stop saying bad words. But the bad word climbs up on his shoulder like a little fuzzy creature and hangs with him until something happens, like he stubs his toe, and then the bad words jump out. Okay, the bad word jumps off his shoulder. Okay, and so he has to take that bad word cap captive. And that's what Scott says. Listen to this. He says, picture yourself raising your hand above your head, fingers spread wide like this, and capture that thought in the air like it's a ball, like it's a baseball, and then release it to Jesus. I have never heard this described this way, but I think I'm in love. I just think I'm in love. When that negative thought comes against me, put my hand above my head or in front of my heart and snag it. Say, no, you don't. I'm giving this to Jesus. He's going to handle it for me because he is my defender. That's what scripture says. God is my refuge and my defender. Satan doesn't get to come at, well, he, get, he does. He comes after us with his army. He comes after us with everything he has and trying to create unhealthy patterns in us. Oh, Marianne Schuler, she is here. Marianne Schuler, are you so proud that I'm talking about this young man? I just am blown away by this book. I am blown away. And, and, and I love another person's perspective on this whole thing. It, it's, let me tell you something. Just because we are Christian does not mean we are free from sin. It means we are growing every day in battling that sin. That's what it means. And we long to be free from sin, but we're not free. You know, it's kind of like when Paul says, I don't even understand what I do. I don't do the things I want to do, and I do the things I don't want to do. And, and, and he taught, Paul talks about that in Romans. But, but the truth is, we can be tempted and choose not to sin. See, I can be tempted to, to, to listen to the lies Satan threw at me through people yesterday. And some of those people who love me and care for me. And I'm going to tell you this. i got to be equipped, and you've got to be equipped to fight against Satan and his foolishness and his attacks. I don't even like using silly words like foolishness and, um, and, and because it's, it's dangerous. His dangerous, devious, ridiculous attacks. But I need you to be equipped to fight back. And when I opened this book... Marianne Schuler, listen to me. I decided because my pastor's been talking about fighting against Satan and I've been doing some studying, I went straight to that section of the book. You see, God knew exactly what I needed to hear. Exactly what I needed to hear. I am so grateful this morning that God knows what you need to hear too. He knows what you need this morning. He knows what you need tomorrow before you even know your need. God is not a God of lack. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. And he restores my soul so that I can have rest. 
Look at this crazy hair this morning. I just noticed how bad it is. That's because I walked in the humidity. He restores my soul. He has restored my soul this morning. He surely has. And he doesn't need me to defend myself against anybody. He's going to do that for me. Scripture says he will prepare a table for us. Remember we talked about that in the presence of our enemies. I talked about that with you all. And then Satan came after me to get a seat at my table. You see, I spoke of it out loud. Satan knew it and he said, watch this. I'm going to take her out. I'm going to sit down at her table of her mind and make her doubt herself this week. He tried real hard and for a bit he was winning, but it was only for a bit. Because God threw me a book. God threw me a lifeline. It was exactly what I needed. God will do the same for each and every one of us. I am just so grateful for you to be here with me today. I would appreciate your prayers this morning. I'm going into a conference to um, and I, I keep just saying to God, I just want to walk worthy of you this morning. I just That's all I want to do. I want to walk worthy of you with every decision, with every word, with everything I do this day. So I would appreciate you praying that prayer with me as I face this morning. And without doubting who I am in God. He is good. And we can fight a good fight, a beautiful fight against Satan because we can win in God's power and that's always beautiful. Have a phenomenal, beautiful October fall weekend. I love you all and I'll see you Monday.